after all these years, I've made so many suits, and some of them you look and you think they're great and everything else. Probably the one I liked best of all was the first one I ever made for the movie for De Niro. And I probably got more pleasure out of that because it was exciting to do something for the movies. Wolf of Wall Street, DiCaprio worked with him. Sam Jackson was Robocop 4. Jonah Hill. Ben Stiller, Zoolander 2. Michael Douglas, Wall Street 2. Shia LaBeouf, Wall Street 2. Sasha Baron Cohen was the dictator. My first job was with a company called Thresher and Lanny, and with my first wage packet, I walked around and I bought these shears. I think they're Wilkinson's, it's worn out now, but I've had them since then and never had them sharpened. But these ones are like an old friend. I mean, they just feel so comfortable in my hand and they still got a good balance to them. I stayed there for six months and it was the only job I ever left voluntarily. So I went to work for a company called Morris Segal. I got fired from there after six months. Bernard Weatherall was fired after six months. The Welsh and Jeffries fired after 18 months. I realized that uh, if I didn't start my own business, there was never a chance I was going to earn any money. Bespoke suit, somebody walks in and speaks the order. It's bespoken, comes from the word bespoken. You come in, you speak the order, you pick the fabrics, then it's handmade, cut a paper pattern, cut the suit out, fit it on, uh, and so on. The Savile Row tailors now say it's Savile Row bespoke. So I guess I'm New York bespoke now. I hadn't thought about that. People say, oh, you just got to measure, it's easy. It's the nuances of the body. How do you hold your shoulders? Your right shoulder's a little bit lower than the left. You're squarish and, and you're a lot slimmer and your back is a little bit different. You stand a little bit more erect. All this has to come into account whether you're doing a bespoke or a made to measure. And it takes a long time to learn that. I learned very quickly because I had to learn. I didn't have anybody I could fall back on. My parents had no money. And after a few months, I was sitting in uh, at work one day and I'm looking at all these seven or eight suits that clients had thrown back at me. I couldn't work it out. I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, these are beautiful suits. What's the matter with them? And I'm looking and looking and I suddenly realised I was a 21-year-old putting my idea of a suit on a 55-year-old stockbroker. So it's not my suit, it's your suit. And that really was a turning point in my business. If, if I've got an opinion, I'll give it. But if you don't want it, but you've had my opinion, I, my job is to make that suit and get paid for it. The other thing I learned all the way back then was uh, not to blame the client if I couldn't do my job properly. I had one guy, and he was with, with an old guy with his shoulders, and I really didn't know how to fit in. And I'm trying, I'm trying, and, and in the end I said to him, the thing is, Mr. Rosen, Rosenberg, you've got a very difficult figure. And he turned around and he looked at me, he goes, God's work is perfect, yours is not. So, from then on, I, I keep my mouth shut. Tell the other story I like. When we were doing American Gangster, I got really well with a costume designer, Janty Yates. She said, Len, where are you, where are you? And I said, I'm just getting into work, Janty. She said, come up to the Hilton on 6th Avenue, which is only two blocks away on 53rd, because we got trouble. So I go up there and I found the costume uh, truck. And she said, look at the sleeves and this, this coat, it's all collapsed. And I said, well, they've slammed, all, slammed it all together. It's a lightweight garment. So she said, can you go press it up because we need it for this scene we're waiting to do upstairs. So I said, okay. The whole of the set is waiting for this suit and it costs $10,000 a minute while we're waiting. So I said to her, I'll run. So I ran up to the, to the hotel. So in this scene, he goes to the top of this winding staircase in the in the hotel room, he takes his jacket off, he squashes it over his arm, I thought I just pressed it, and as he's walking down the steps, then he puts it on, and he says a few things to his mother, and then his mother slaps him on the face. Don't lie to me! That probably cost them, I don't know, for $10,000 a minute, that was like 45 minutes. Boy, I could have just charged extra for that suit, couldn't I? <laughs> we started with seven customers, we built a big client 
space in London. Then we started going all through Europe. I'd always wanted to come to the States and I started coming out here. First order I took 12 suits, then it went down to eight, then it went down to seven. My old partner was ready to call it a day and I said, no, I really feel that we got a plug at this. It was, it's good. I thought I'd crossed pretty much every T and dotted every I. The logistics of it all being made in the UK and come over here was, uh, was a lot more difficult than I thought. I had eight months worth of work to build up to make it viable. Um, my partner wasn't prepared to wait that long and I, got a f I was at work in my old place. I'd, we just had our second child. We'd just taken a lease on a store on, on Madison Avenue and I worked with them one day and the facts went and it was my old partner saying, you're on your own, we're not working with you anymore. Um, really, I had to really work hard in order to keep the business afloat. John. May I help you? Yes, I'm here to see the tailor about a fitting for a new suit. Certainly. And what kind of suit would you be interested in this evening? A tweed or worsted? Perhaps a nice gabardine? Uh, perhaps a worsted and a tweed. Both single-breasted? Yes. There's a woman on the phone wants to know if I make a suit for Robert De Niro. What do you think I should say? And I'm measuring him and he's kind of cocking his head and looking at me strangely and then we finished it all off and the next time I come in I'm getting the suit ready for a fitting and he's doing the same thing. Then he turned round to me and said, there's a scene in this movie in a tailor's shop. Would you like to be in it? I said, sure, I've never been in a movie. Sounds like a lot of fun. Two or three buttons, sir. Three buttons. You might come this way, please, sir. Please, our senior tailor will be right with you, sir. Thank you. I don't know how much I turn over at a new year. I don't know how many suits I make every single year. My job is to make them. And if I do my job properly and concentrate on that, the money will come in. And that's what I concentrate on. And between that and my wife doing the bills, you know, it, it's gone pretty well. I had a friend once, we were talking about job descriptions and I said to him, what's, what's my job description? And he thought about it, he goes, it's very expressive. You make these suits, got nice expression in the shoulders, you've got the nice waist, wasting in them, you make beautiful suits. And I said, that's not my job description. And he thought about it, he went through it a second time, he went through it a third time, and then said, what's your job description? I said, my job description is to provide for my family. And I want to provide for my family the best possible way. And I can only do that by doing, making my suits the best possible way. I was, I was given a gift in my, in my hand and in my, in my mind for my job, and I used it to, the, to, to it, it's a, I believe it's a gift from God. So what do I want to be known for? I provide, provided for my family. That to me is the most important thing. construct the paper pattern, cut the suit out here. I give the jacket to the jacket maker and the trousers to the trouser maker. Wait for the guy to come in for a fit of the suit on him. If I need to, I take the collar off, the sleeves out, and the shoulder out, and I'll pin everything back, looking in the mirror all the time. Then I can start going into the shape. The selling is the easy part of the job. It's the making and the delivering and then getting paid for at the end. It's, it's a, which is kind of where the real work starts. <laughs>